the streaming so far is yellow green. Is we that a good thing? And we're going live, guys. You see that it's changing. <laughs> Where? <laughs> Where? I don't know. I haven't got my glasses Here we on. Go. <laughs> guys, we are live. We are live from the headquarters of Rebreatherland in Ahmed. How are you, everyone? <laughs> Hello. <laughs> good to see you. This video is live now. Yes, there we are. Are we there? Yeah, yeah. We are live. We're live. Look How are you that. guys? We are here with Mark Crane in the Rebreather headquarters or the cave of the man. Well, yeah, exactly. The man cave. It's my man cave. It's uh, man you cave. need a man cave. It's, it's All a the small. toys are in here. All the toys. And we're starting now our Rebreather session Q&A. Live and in person. Live and in person. Yeah. yeah. As we already anticipated in previous episode, we finally made it. Mike and I went underwater. And today we spent quite a lot of time. We spent a lot of time on there. Two and a half hours. Two and a half hours. That was the, was two and a half hours. Two hours forty one. Uh, hundred and forty one minutes. Hundred forty one minutes. Yeah. Not bad. That's two hours twenty one minutes. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> sure. Uh, we're being pedantic here. Two, <laughs> two and a third <laughs> hours. Something it's, for it's sure. It's a Swiss Germanic thing. Yes. <laughs> He's Italian. So, something for sure was uh, you know like uh, it's uh, it was the longest dive I have ever made. Have you ever made? Them? Uh, probably, probably. Really? You already made maybe the, one hundred. No, but done. I've probably done one twenty. I've done two hours. Two so hours. So maybe, maybe this is my longest. Twenty-one minutes past the the. the is, you you broke my the record. record. I broke my record. Yeah. But so we, guys, we tomorrow, see tomorrow's another day. You know, people hold coming in. Break another record <laughs> again. <laughs> how is everyone? As promised, we made it. We are not sure how the connection is gonna go, guys. So it could be that we're, we're, we're gonna lose internet, you if we black internet. out in the middle of this uh, live show. And uh, but this is the Bail. first ever remote live show that we do. It is. Oh wow! With we'll call this in studio, Mark. You're our first in studio guest since since the old days. Wow! Since pre-COVID really? times, I, 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 I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm what an honor, privilege. Thank you. Jess. So we basically brought all our studio tools uh, and things, and we placed them here and set this up. Different background, you. It's working very, very well. Different background, guys. If you're logging in now, please let us know you are here. We, you are here to listen, talking about rebreather diving. And if you have any questions, please make sure that you ask them. In the question section because we're gonna answer that we're gonna have a couple of testimonials coming in actually four testimonials from some uh, rebreather users professional rebreather users and we're gonna tell you also about that and today we're gonna talk also more in detail with mark the expert of course about this unit over here which is the rebo the Meat. peanut the yes. peanut uh, the yellow peanut which is the unit we at the moment mike and i are using which is uh, Pretty awesome. Like, it's brought us back alive so far. So far, it works so so good. You know, before we get into this, you know, like I would like to to share a little bit of the experience that uh, I had so far yep. with this old uh, rebreather, and I would like to check with you also about your experience. But something that really I appreciated in this uh, two days on trying something new, something which is quite advanced because there is lots of preparation behind this, and. I really appreciate the fact that I've been diving for so long and uh, let's say open circuit became like a second nature and this is sort of, I wouldn't say like start from the beginning because I'm comfortable in the water since that many years that I've been diving but all the technicalities and details of it, the, the preparation like that, I really appreciate that a lot because it's making me sort of back in line as a good Feeling diver. like a newbie. Yeah, as a newbie and be, let's say, a good diver. And I think that is going to improve my skills also on the open circuit, the general way of diving. What, what about you, Mike? Well, I feel a little bit humbled because t today, even more than yesterday, today I just, my buoyancy was so crap mm -hmm. that I was just getting so frustrated with myself. It's like, ah, I feel like... I heard you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I was swearing. You, you feel like, like uh, you know, when you watch someone bringing in a couple of divers on there, uh, you know, a little, what do they call it, discover dive. People have never gone diving before. They have absolutely no buoyancy control. I felt like that a little bit today. It was very annoying, which you're not used to. You're used to being, you know, completely in control of your buoyancy. You can breathe a little bit here, breathe a little bit there, and you know exactly what you're doing. Here, it's just like, oh, it's not working. Very, very frustrating. But again, something that you will get used to, repetition, once 
Do what did you do a little bit more? Lost your mojo. Lost my mojo. <laughs> right. Got humbled. <laughs> right, right. Takes uh, a lot to humble me. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, so, but you did well. Uh, but I mean, yeah, <laughs> coming back to what you're saying about the, the whole preparation and the technicalities there, uh, I think you know you've also noticed it does take a little bit of practice. Checklists work. Yep. Uh, checklists are really, really good. I love but checklists. I'm, I'm sure they're. It's also very. Um, very similar uh, when you're prepping your camera because you don't just sort of like go stick it in the housing and jump in the water. Right. There are Most, mostly I do. Oh really? Okay. <laughs> yeah, let's not get into that, but we actually do. Mostly I just <laughs> stick it in there and jump. <laughs> Sometimes we 50k of equipment. <laughs> you can do that with a rebreather as well. Okay. Yeah. No, but I think here I would uh, make it more like the the comparison of like it's being in a in a cockpit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did I pronounce that? Correctly? Cockpit. Yes. Yeah, cockpit, correct. Exactly. Why do you call Just it like the don't, cockpit? Don't 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 <laughs> say it any any different way. Right. You're good. Yeah. So it's like being in a cockpit. Okay, flight details before the starting and fly out from your airport. You it's have the, to go all through those things. The captains are drinking their yeah. cocktails. And actually, you know, like uh, I mean, this is uh, serious. I mean, you have great benefits in using a machine like this, and but it's serious. And so that's the thing. It's like uh, I've been saying. Scuba diving comes very easy, open water circuit, no problem, grab the tank, oh, I put my, my BCD, maybe when I'm in the water and things, now here it's like everything, like go, cha, 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 checking, 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 yep. and a that uh, make you a better diver for sure. So if you've been like a long time uh, uh, dive professional, for instance, I think that go into something like this, it's a great exercise for you go through a rebreather course. Yeah, learn a little something uh, new. It's very, very Sure. Good. Yeah. And during COVID? Uh, and during COVID, uh, nothing uh, else to do. It's the best time. Uh, yeah. So, Mike, you were saying that the buoyancy for you was totally different. So, oh. Mark, why don't you explain what, what's the difference in buoyancy between the open circuit divers and rebreather divers? I'll tell you what, I'm going to let Mike go for it. Oh, <laughs> man. Yeah, oh, <laughs> man. Yeah. Well, obviously, the difference, main difference is you've got your bladders in here. So, when we dive with uh, open circuit, we exhale, the gas comes out of those little flanges, and off it goes. Here, you've got a, uh, both an... Uh, we'll, we'll do it like an, we'll, exactly. we'll do it like an airplane. We'll, I'll do the, uh, the, there the you trolley go. dolly. You can be yeah. Vanna White. <laughs> you, you probably don't know who Vanna White is. But you've got the two hoses here, so you're breathing in one, and you're exhaling, so your, your breath comes in here, and it exhales out there. So you've got a mix of your oxygen and your dilutant, or diluent as they like to call it. Here, pre-mixes your gas, comes in here, you breathe it, your exhalation goes back in here, and then it gets cleaned by this um, scrubber. scrubber, little pellets, basically, that cleans out the carbon dioxide. And so you're rebreathing it all the time, so you're not losing the air into the water like you would on a normal, um, on a normal scuba thing. And so you've got these two little bags in here so when yeah, you exhale plastic the plastic bag fills up right when you inhale the plastic bag the air from the plastic bag comes into your lungs so you're never losing the air like we do on, on scuba on scuba so when you inhale and exhale you're very much going down uh, and it's very very different than when if you start floating up you actually need to exhale from your mask or blow some water out of your blow some air out of your regulator, so you stop floating. It's very, very different, just a it's different way different, of doing it. It's very different, especially when we are used to just on a dive, go there and take a breath, yep. and I'm going to go up, and then, oh, I'm going to go up, and you go. First, and then Doesn't I can work come anymore. Down. Yeah. When so you exhale now, you actually go up faster. Yeah. If you're watching us live, guys, sorry if the connection is a little bit unstable, just bear with us, guys. And uh, if you didn't have a good experience, also come back later and watch it again because this will be posted on our Facebook page. Meanwhile, if you have any question about diving with a rebreather, come and ask us. We are over here to answering your questions and we would like to see some of you. We see that many of you are actually checking in live right now and that's super good. So... To, uh, just going back to that, as far as the buoyancy control is concerned, uh, Mike, you yep. started diving in home waters uh, in Vancouver, correct? Oh, I started in Thailand and then went to oh, Vancouver. Oh, you started yeah, in yeah. Thailand. And then Open went, water yeah. in the warm and then went cold for the long time after that. Did, and then did, uh, so did you jump into uh, Vancouver waters with a uh, with a wetsuit? Or First I... started off with a 7 mil wetsuit uh, Farmer John jacket. 
and then moved into the dry suit. Okay, so how did it then actually uh, compare using the dry suit to, to a wetsuit? Again, yeah, much different. You you had to think about it more. You know, when you're going down, you get that first suit squeeze while you're going down. Was on, then you got to, you know, fill yourself up. And then you actually do a lot more of that. I've found that you do more, a little bit more with the, the, the buoyancy control actually from your suit rather than with your BCD, even though you're not supposed to. But uh, quite often I did. Okay. Yeah, anything you can compare uh, as far as the similar kind of experience with yeah. the rebreather? With the, if you <clears throat> screw up with your, with, you know, you get an air bubble in your feet and all of a sudden you're floating up backwards like that. Mm -hmm. uh, and sometimes you would feel the same with the rebreather. All of a sudden you're floating up like this, almost not quite feet first, but back first. You're going up like that. And it's like, oh, exhale here. Whereas the suit, you just, you know, lift your arm up. You, you You've got to get that dump that air out you've or else got it's to get, a closed you've got system. Get, exactly. You've got to dump that air out. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. And, and you know, uh, just observing uh, both of you, you and Luca uh, today and yesterday with, you know, the kind of uh, limited depths that we we're going to uh, and it was just seeing what all experienced right. open circuit divers go through because you're just so in tune with controlling your buoyancy through using your lungs. lung volume. You're no longer using your, your wing, your BCD, you know, your stabilizing jacket or whatever. Uh, it's all about, I'm just doing it with breathing control. Yep. The thing is now here, you are breathing in and out of a bag. That basically means your, uh, your lung vo volume is in your lungs. Mm. Uh, when you exhale, it doesn't escape out into the uh, ambient uh, water column. True. Uh, it goes into this plastic bag. So your buoyancy is actually constant. Uh, and this is something that yesterday we had a few of those kind of wily e. coyote moments where it was like, I'm, 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 I'm inhaling. Why am I in the sand? Uh, and the same kind of uh, uh, opposite, like I'm exhaling. Why am I on the surface? Today it was actually getting better because you're becoming more aware. You're actually having to step back. Yep. Do the uh, uh, primarily control your buoyancy over your buoyancy compensating device over your wing. Uh, uh, and then just breathe normally yeah. uh, and you can't actually do it with breath control. Uh, any kind of depth changes what you're then doing here, especially something we, we saw today uh, on the ascent yep. uh, is you're having to actually vent that gas because Boyle's law uh, as uh, pressure decreases, volume increases, and you've just now actually got uh, more excess gas, which you need to vent out to maintain that control. And the other thing I noticed today was I had a bit of a leaking mask. So if I'm clearing my mask, ah. I'm losing buoyancy. Yeah, exactly. and that was because you're yeah. venting out. From yeah. yeah, you're venting out, uh, and also you lose efficiency because here we see the unit is not that much bigger than let's say a dive tank and a BCD on. Actually, how wh what's the total weight once we have also the small tanks on, like you can see there <coughs> in the background over there? Okay, I mean uh, the, the these ones here they're carbon, so they're a lot lighter. Uh, you probably would need a little bit of weight depending on the suit configuration you're using. Here in Asia, what we're uh, usually warning, or in warm water, uh, I actually prefer the aluminum. Aluminium. Uh, thank <laughs> you for the uh, uh, correct European. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, he usually speaks American English. Yeah, exactly, yeah, so the aluminum cylinders. Um, I, I do prefer those. Um, with S19s or three liter aluminum, aluminum cylinders, uh, fully loaded, the unit's going to be coming in at around about 20 kilos. 20, 20 kilos. 20 so kilos. if we think about like... With this particular model. Uh, 11.6 uh, dive seal in aluminum. Yep. Once it's full, it's around there. It's about uh, 15 kgs. Yeah, then you've got your weight belt. You've yeah. still got your regulator. Yeah. Um, so yeah. uh, obviously when you're using uh, aluminum cylinders, you probably have to, uh, in open circuit, going to have to put a little bit more weight on uh, as the cylinder gets breathed down and becomes more right. buoyant. So it is coming to around about the same time. Yeah. Uh, and same kind of weight. What's amazing is, to me still, is uh, do we have like one of those tanks there on the side? I saw one before, like Which? one of those cylinders, the small ones that uh, you place on the. No, on anymore. The side. Oh, no, they're. Okay, they place that. Yeah. So we're talking about this size cylinder. What size is that? This one here is a two liter cylinder. Two liter cylinder. Okay, two the liter one that we're using. These are three liters. We're using the three liters in training because we're doing obviously uh, a lot of exercises. Yeah. You know, a, a lot of practicing, uh, adding gas, checking with buoyancy, etc. Right. Uh, um, so having a little bit 
more volume definitely helps. Uh, it gives you that bit more of a safety margin, that buffer. Yeah. Uh, you can do the maths. It's quite simple in the metric system, Mike. As yes, we, I uh, understand. As, yeah, as I'm ambidextrous. Yes, exactly. Okay. So we have a two liter cylinder at 200 bar. Yeah. How many uh, liters of gas have you got? 400. Hey, yes. there we go. He's cracking. He's improving. And then a three liter <laughs> cylinder at 200 bar is Six. 600 liters. 600 uh, liters. So you've, of got, air. Got, you've got that benefit of another 200 liters of gas. Right. Uh, so we're going to have, let's say, 600 liters on one side and... Uh, 600 liters on the other side. And 600 liters, so What's 1200, the... when normally we would have something like 2400 liters on a normal dive cylinder, a standard, uh, let's say, 12 liters. 11 liter. Yeah, 11.3. Yeah. We are a little bit below, yeah. yeah. We are a little bit on 2300 something, right? Okay. Or something like that. However, what was so impressive is that today we did a dive to two hours and 21 minutes. And I think that I didn't get to half the pressure inside my cylinders. In mm. the... No, the two cylinders you're carrying are on a traditional closed circuit rebreather, it's a good way of actually how you can recognize a closed circuit rebreather normally. Uh, designs and um, uh, models are changing now for different applications, um, different environments, uh, however, a good way to actually recognize a closed circuit rebreather from, let's say, a semi-closed rebreather uh, is the amount of cylinders it has. So you usually actually have on the left-hand side what we call a diluent, a dilutant yep. cylinder, a <laughs> diluent, uh, uh, which can be air, it can be nitrox. For deeper diving, you're going to be using trimix. And on the right-hand side, you've usually got pure oxygen because a whole kind of uh, principle of a closed circuit rebreather is it's a recycling machine. Uh, our body doesn't need nitrogen. It doesn't need helium. Uh, it produces carbon dioxide. The thing that we require is oxygen. The oxygen that we metabolize uh, for working for energy, for swimming around, for taking photos, uh, taking research measurements, whatever, needs to be replaced and that comes from the two uh, that comes from the oxygen cylinder which is placed here on the right hand right. side okay the diluent actually just allows us uh, to dive deeper than six meters uh, anybody who's done a nitrox course will know that uh, oxygen partial pressure shouldn't go above 1.6 therefore if you're now using pure oxygen and you're going down deeper than six meters you're going to have a problem with oxygen becoming toxic, toxic yeah uh, therefore we need that that second cylinder, right. the diluent cylinder, which allows us to equalize the loop volume, uh, the the plastic bag that you're breathing in and out of, basically. Mm -hmm. That's all it is, really, yep. as, right. you, as you've seen. Uh, uh, it allows you then to actually keep the oxygen partial pressure in a range that you have predetermined as being safe for the mission, the objective that you've got planned. Uh, right. uh, <clears throat> and it allows me to stay down and it, allows you, long long you want. <laughs> and it allows you to comfortably breathe. Yeah. Uh, uh, once you've actually got down to your target depth, you've yeah. equalized that bag out, and then all the rebreather is doing is it's removing the carbon dioxide that we produce uh, yeah. as a byproduct, as an exhaust gas, basically, uh, from the oxygen that we metabolize. Right. Uh, that needs to be then scrubbed out, cleaned out, in something that looks pretty much like kitty litter, uh, sometimes a bit of a problem flying around with, uh, <laughs> in Indonesia yeah. because, you know, kilos and kilos of white powder at some airports kind of ring a lot. Yeah, they might, they might not like, look uh, But that's getting scrubbed out in this chemical process, uh, which looks similar to a filter, but it's not a filter. Right. And then oxygen is being reintroduced, so it stays the same. Right. Uh, Inside. At optimum partial pressure. The right? optimum partial pressure that you've decided that you decide want to have have for, for the dive that you're doing. Yeah, so but as, like as today as it, we were do, having the best nitrox uh, possible at each depth. Yeah, exactly. Were. I mean, uh, today we were what? We, we did a maximum depth. Uh, because 12. 12 meters. Right. Uh, uh, it was just getting comfortable, getting uh, familiar with the unit. We don't need to go super deep with rebreathers. They, right. they can go super deep, but you know, we start off gently uh, yeah. and work it out and get ahead around it. Yeah. Uh, and especially in that shallow water, you've got uh, a lot of dynamics. Uh, buoyancy becomes more difficult, you know, PPO2 management becomes more difficult. So it's definitely a, a higher level of skill yes. uh, needed to control it in shallow water. There's more awareness that you need in shallow water. So well done on that one, gents. <laughs> uh, but we were trying to target a partial pressure of uh, oxygen that we were breathing of how much? 
Uh, one. 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 We were trying to target one. one. And we were one. trying to maintain that manually by just adding oxygen to keep it constant, a PO2 of one. Correct? Let's make it easy now from a mathematics perspective, also for those people uh, with a beer at home, uh, if, if it's barley <laughs> time. Beer. Uh, Speaking uh, of beer. Uh, yeah, no, not me. Um, the wife might be watching. Uh, <laughs> let's say 10 meters. Uh, yes. 10 meters, we've got two atmospheres. Two atmospheres. Your PPO2 oh, is one bar. Uh, yes. That's what we we're trying to maintain. So, what was the nitrox the unit was giving you? <laughs> it's your question. <laughs> so, at uh, one. Remember so how Z uh, is remembers. It's 0.21 at the surface, right? No, but we were trying to maintain one. We maintain one. At a pressure yeah. of two. Two. Uh, at a pressure of two. So, what's the nitrox we're breathing? Two. This is going to be a long week. One divided by two. Yes. PO2 is 50. one. 50. 50. Nitrox point, 50. Point 0.5. It's a Nitrox 50. Yeah, I had a Nitrox 50. You had a Nitrox 50. Yeah. Woo! Thanks. This is going to be a really Are you going week. to help me like this during the exam? <laughs> no, 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 I'm not. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be a long week. Don't ask us those questions. We're live, man. Yeah, I know. The world is watching. Uh, <laughs> you failed. <laughs> well, you haven't failed. So, yes, these things are... I had a Nitrox 50. Uh, so, which is the most common Nitrox that we would have <laughs> on a liveaboard is 32. So, I already increased uh, the benefit of uh, extend Oxygen. my time and benefit of nitrox by having a 50 there. Okay, so if we were now maintaining the same PO2 of one bar yeah. and we're diving to 20 meters, what would be the nitrox the machine would make okay. for you? Look at three. Uh, <laughs> Div uh, one divided by three. 33. There we go. So nitrox 33. Mm -hmm. uh, so ni nitrox 33. But what's now actually also the benefit of these things is the amount of time. And it changes. Get. So if I go, yeah. So it, it's not a different dive. I was at 10, uh, 10 before. 10 it gives me a 50. Now I go down at 20. 20. It gives me a 33. Yeah. Automatically. And I need to monitor this. So I have all the instruments. I just double check. Yeah. The machine is working fine. We're good. Just dive. Take photos. Exactly. Uh, but now, why uh, is a rebreather specifically also such a good tool for a variety of uh, photo video projects? Uh, you gas. You are gas recycling. Uh, yeah. uh, rebreathers are also actually very environmentally friendly because they recycle stuff. Mm. Uh, they're recycling. Reduce, gas. Reu uh, reduce, reduce the gas. gas. Reuse the right. gas. Exactly. Let's see. I have a I have a testimonial here from our friend uh, Jason. He just doesn't want to do any more calculations. No, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's exactly what it is. <laughs> I was I was like Homer Simpson when you were asking that. I was like going blank already. When you started it, I went like <laughs> Do <laughs> donuts. So like. Uh, for any underwater, this is from Jason I Isley, guys. He's been on our live show. You can go on our playlist and find him out. So, Jason is a, a professional cameraman. underwater cameraman, producer, long time working with the big productions like Scuba BBC, Zoo, yeah? Scuba Zoo, yep. he's from Scuba Zoo, based in Malaysia. And so, I asked him, uh, What is the advantage of diving with a closed circuit rebreather? And he say for any underwater cameraman or photographer, a CCR, so closed circuit rebreather, is another tool to be used in certain circumstances to maximize your success in capturing a sequence or still images, image. So because you get this extended bottom time, you are actually able to stay down there longer and maximizing your chance to see that specific animal maybe doing some certain behavior or something different like that. So the, extens the extension of time underwater is the biggest advantage a CCR will give, being able to spend such a long period of time waiting for an important behavior. For various BBC shots, we would spend up to four hours on a single dive and would average six hours a day underwater, cap capturing a single sequence. The lack of bubbles and noise is another advantage in some instances and of course the lower decompression times. Overall, it is indeed an important tool, but it also comes with extra cost and time on location at the end of the day, prepping the closed circuit rebreather, as well as your camera equipment, it might take some time when you could instead having a nice beer. Speaking of beer, cheers. This podcast is brought to you by...
Bintang. <laughs> Absolutely nobody. <laughs> <laughs> Brought to you by Bintang. Yeah, thanks, Jason. So we heard from Jason, one of the one expert uh, cameraman I'm, I'm, and yeah, professional. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great testimony and, and, and definitely a man who knows what he's talking about. He's been using rebreathers for, for, for quite a while. Uh, but to try and put that in context, I'm going to force it here now. We're going to get Luca to do another calculation. Go uh, on. And, and explain how this is. And he's like, oh, no. You need more Bintang? Go uh, on. You need, you need more RAM? <laughs> no, no. What's, what's going on? Okay. Up? Go back to uh, what we were talking about earlier on. With these kind of cylinders that we're using, yeah, uh, it's a three liter cylinder, 200 bar of pressure. Yeah. Okay, now we'll try and put that into a little bit of context here. If uh, my surface air consumption rate uh, is 20 liters, uh, I have to actually ventilate 20 liters through my lungs right. to get to the approximate one liter of oxygen that by my body needs mm. to maintain its workload. Uh, I'm ventilating 20 liters, right? right? Right. To get that one, to harvest that one liter of oxygen out. Yeah. Yeah? Okay, great. Now, if I'm at 20 meters, yeah. What's the pressure? Three bar. Three bar. If my surface air consumption rate is 20, 20. at 20 meters, what is my respiratory minute volume? 60. 60. Okay, so we've got now a three liter cylinder at 200 bar. Yeah. Uh, that is how many liters? 600. Uh, 600 liters of gas. Yeah. Uh, you've got a 60 liter per minute respiratory minute right. volume. Yeah. How long does your tank last? It's going to last uh, 10. 10 minutes. 10 minutes. There we go. You see? All right, great. Now, go it's back. Not, to, it's not that long. It's not that not long. long at all. It's, not that, it's, <laughs> it's really not that long. Yeah? Now we actually take it into the context of we've got our three liter oxygen cylinder. Right. Uh, now, this is theory. You're never actually going to be taking any cylinder down to zero bar. We yeah. all know the consequences of that. Take uh, this with a pinch of salt. Exactly. This is just a theoretical example and make the mathematics at this time of the day after a two and a half hour dive a little <laughs> bit simpler. <laughs> uh, okay. Now, my body for the work that I'm doing. I'm hang, on not... hang on a second. Hmm? This is Mike now. This is Mike. Okay, right. Mike. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Mike. Sorry, yeah, I'm passing over. Go over to Mike. <laughs> uh, uh, um, my body. Uh, metabolizes, let's just make the calculation simple, one liter of oxygen. Right. Yeah. For the gentle swimming around in warm water that we do here around Bali. Uh, I'm not talking about fighting against current in Komodo or, you know, uh, diving in Vancouver Sound one with colder water. Uh, we're just basically here, just not overexerting, enjoying the reef, trying to find some images, trying to capture that shot. Yep. Uh, we're going to be metabolizing one liter of oxygen per minute. Per minute. That's here at the surface. That's at 10 meters. That's at 20 meters. Yeah. That's at 40 meters. That's that even doesn't at one, change. That's even at 100 meters. As long as the workload stays the same, our oxygen metabolic rate, which we call volume of oxygen metabolized, or yep. VO2, uh, will be one liter. One liter. All right. Okay, great. Now I've got the same cylinder, it's three liter. Pressurized at 200 bar of... 600. It's 600. So it's 600 liters of oxygen. That's One inside. liter a minute. How many minutes? 600 minutes. 600 minutes, which is... Well done, Mike. Which is a lot better than 60. Uh, uh, or no, 10. Uh, a lot yeah, better exactly. than 10 minutes. Yes. You go from 10 minutes to 10 hours. Yes. Right. Yeah. Okay. And that is the beauty of it. Other benefits? How, how, how do you feel when you get up to the surface and you take the mouthpiece out? Nice and dribbly. wet. Uh, dribbly. 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 When I'm on I, look, I look like a Rottweiler yeah. with some food in front of me. Right, yeah. Right, right. And yeah, and same. And how, how, how is the gas? Is the gas cold or is it warm? warm. No, it's warm. No, it's warm. It's warm. Yeah, the breathing You don't have different. a dry mouth. The you don't have a different. Like when I'm on open circuit, I'm breathing like... Doing that slow... When I'm here, I'm just breathing like I'm breathing right now in this room talking to you. Exactly. Really? Yeah. yeah. Like, I don't do that because when, and maybe because I'm already on my third dive doing this now, because it started today, I think. Mm -hmm. Because otherwise, when I do mm -hmm. that deep breathing, I actually feel that I don't need to do that, first of all. But second, I start to push more gas in because there is an automatic valve that you, if you really need the air, it helps to give, uh, not the air, the gas, it helps to, to give you that gas. And that is called? ADV. Yeah, and that stands for? And that stands for, Mike? <laughs> <laughs> Auto diluent valve? Yeah, uh, automatic so we go, well done. Valve. See, I said diluent. Uh, I said diluent. I didn't say dilutant. 
It's called ADV. <laughs> <laughs> I am I am a, a star at these little ads and all these little short terms yeah, uh, acronyms. Let, let acronyms. Check, That's uh, the word I'm looking for. <laughs> I know I know what they are. I just can't say the word acronym. Right. We got another uh, testimony. We, we, another we have another testimony. We need help. <laughs> and uh, who's this testimonial from? So here is a comment from Howard Hall. Oh, no. oh, okay. yeah, same, famous uh, cinematographer okay he said i understand completely how your ccr works and review repeatedly what symptoms to expect and what you are going to do when something fails it's very very important so, so you, you wouldn't kind of suggest strapping on a ccr and heading straight down to like 40 yeah. 50 60 meters so right. that's why you have to go through a training and that's why before i said it's so important what i really appreciate during this course is all these details and things to go and keep together yeah. because you have to perform so during a course you're gonna put uh, under pressure not on, only by the water but by the task itself there's a lot of task level, and yeah. you need to learn and perform and it makes you a better diver, for sure, sure and better in, in checking things. And Howard Hall has got 2,810 hours on the loop. The loop. That's a lot of hours. Fantastic. Thanks, Howard, for this uh, testimonial and things. Let's see if we get some question out from our... From the, the live audience? From live the live audience. audience. How many people are still actually there? I don't know. I had them a minute ago. I've lost yeah, them. Yeah, come and go. Come and go. Hey, hey, hey. No more bubbles, say hey, Pepe. Yes. Uh, hello from Maldives. Okay. Faisal also is in, is, is in the Maldives. Oh, okay. <laughs> Interesting to do a rebreather course. Okay. Cassandra, well, Cassandra we do, we do have a question. Cassandra is definitely on the wine by now. We have a question from Prash. Hi oh, guys, just a question for Mark. Uh -oh. Are there any advantages of the Revo versus the AP, which is over there? Uh, the, uh, oh, I think it starts with this right here, does it not? Which one it's easier to, to put together and to they, learn? They, they, uh, uh, all rebreathers uh, have their own kind of little nuances, their little quirks. You need to actually uh, understand it. It's, it's very difficult actually to say uh, why this one? This one, it's personal choice, uh, yep. your own personal philosophies. Uh, uh, I, I use actually all of them. I'm qualified uh, on all of them. Uh, I like each and every one of the units for a particular uh, reason. Um, I would probably still actually say that the Revo is uh, currently my go-to rebreather because of the advantages it gives me or the, the boxes it ticks for me personally. Uh, I think it's actually uh, super small, lightweight, mm -hmm. uh, low profile. Mm -hmm. The lightweight is a great thing for traveling. I mean, I'm, uh, I'm doing a, a lot of traveling. Well, not anymore. Hopefully, soon again. Uh, but I uh, used to do a, a lot of traveling, uh, teaching. So I was going over like, you know, Philippines, Taiwan, uh, Australia, other places here in Asia, uh, using the rebreather. And I needed something light, uh, lightweight, compact, um, the, which the Revo does. It's a little bit different from the AP. Um, the other thing is uh, in a lot of the countries that, uh, that we dive in here in, in, in Asia, uh, the absorbent material can be quite expensive. Mm. Uh, and the way the Revo actually does it with a split canister, just uh, yep. which is instead of actually having one lump yeah. sum of absorbent material, you actually have two. Yeah. Uh, this is what removes the CO2. So this is your your filter, basically, uh, which is not right, uh, but this is the, the scrubber. Uh, uh, I can then use one uh, to the maximum amount uh, of efficiency I can, take that out, throw it away, and then just cycle the other one into place. So I'm getting with the RMS, which is a scrubber monitoring system that the unit has. I'm getting here uh, on normal kind of dives in that sort of like 40 meter range yeah uh, i'm getting around about seven hours out of out of those out of 1.3 kilos uh, okay uh, only where, one uh, and out of, what uh, about the other one and uh, that, that one there i'm getting 
uh, that also actually has a temp stick uh, available for it, and I'm getting around about seven hours out of two and a half kilos. Two and a half kilos. Okay, uh, so, so this one would actually, be more economical. Yeah, on, much on much more efficient. Uh, yeah. If you know, actually don't have these uh, scrubber monitoring systems, uh, where regardless if it's with the Revo or on the AP, yeah. Uh, what you then actually have to do is you stick to the CE testing protocols uh, yep. uh, and procedures. Uh, and for the Revo, it is uh, three hours uh, on one uh, in water temperatures above 15 degrees uh, and four and a half hours combined. So you're getting that efficiency. Awesome. Uh, we have another question here from Pepe. What are the basic requirements to join a first, re re a first level rebreather course? Uh, we were talking about this the other day, uh, if you can remember, uh, the way rebreathers have actually developed. They've kind of developed backwards. People who got into rebreathers uh, traditionally have always been technical divers, uh, deep trimix divers, right. who wanted to actually use the rebreather as a tool to save some uh, expensive gas uh, and go down to 100 meters and see that wreck. Uh, so. Uh, it still actually is, uh, at this uh, at this moment in time, um, for deeper uh, technical diving, using the rebreather, the prerequisites is you need to have a advanced nitrox deco procedures, uh, mm. okay. or a, 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 you know, an intro to tech level certification where you're allowed to conduct decompression. However, a lot of the uh, mainstream uh, training agencies regardless if this is uh, like SSI with their XR programs or TDI, INTD, um, they are allowing a more recreationally orientated okay. uh, approach. Somebody who's never actually done any te technical diving mm. whatsoever uh, uh, in their life, you go like, I don't want to go through wearing lots of tanks yeah. and doing all right. of these because gas switches. Right. That's just something I don't want to do. I want to actually learn the benefits of a rebreather. Entry level programs are now available where you're then using the rebreather in a non decompression setting, diving to a maximum depth of 30 meters. Yep. And trust me, you will go and do that. You will go and do some non deco dives to 30 meters on the rebreather. Yeah. You will then clock your hours and you go, I'd like oh, to upgrade to the next yeah. course right. because everything is now in your reach. Everything is like you can, you can you see it, do, you can yeah. almost touch it. And now uh, we can you can, go you can like, you can almost But taste we need it. to train for the for yes. it for sure and then the levels go up yeah, yeah. now another question is uh, from uh, Faisal is asking uh, also is it better to buy the rebreather beforehand and do the course or better to buy after the course good question good question uh, the way rebreathers actually again started here uh, back in the day a lot of uh, dive centers instructors shops that were offering training they didn't actually have the um, the units. The units. That, not only the units, but the, uh, you know, the, the, the expendable uh, uh, finances to go, hey, listen, we'll just put like four units on the shelf yeah. here. If you want to go and do a rebreather course, you can actually have to buy a unit through us, and right. then we teach, teach you on that gotcha. unit. Uh, uh, and what actually happened here is, you know, some units were not suitable for a particular user or a particular um, objective that a user had selected the tool for, okay. uh, you kind of get through the class and you go, this isn't actually for me. And then we'd actually take a big hit on selling a unit yeah. secondhand. Right. Uh, I mean, it's like basically with a car, you uh, buy a brand new car, you drive it off the lot uh, and the value depreciates. Yeah. Right. Therefore, uh, if you want to... Uh, and also, uh, I don't you, know if I would be... Happy. If you like it, if, if you like, like it, it right? absolutely, yeah. if you like it. Uh, yeah. So therefore, I mean, if you think about moving into rebreathers, definitely here, do your research. Yeah. Uh, have a look at what you want to be, uh, what you want to use the tool for. Mm -hmm. Don't think about a year, 18 months, two years ahead. Uh, you've got to also actually have like a five-year game plan. Right. Uh, where you want to be and how you actually want to develop it. Uh, yeah. You also then need to think about the location that you're in. Mm -hmm. uh, how long you're going to use it. It's, it. That's very important. That's what I'm, I'm to telling to myself now during the course, actually. Because, you know, this training is really like deep into diving, technical mm -hmm. diving. Okay, well, sort of thing. So I'm thinking about this is something that I need to practice. Oh, you, you do know, need to, to practice, keep, yes. To keep my skill fresh, you know, like this, that at the end of this course, you know, like uh, I need to keep going and doing that. So definitely, like before you decide to go into, let's say, a rebreather course, you must uh, 
consider to put there some time to invest into continuing into the discipline. Yes, absolutely. To keep yourself up to date. But, but you know, yeah, you want to actually then go through, uh, and I, to answer Faisal's question here, I would normally always actually suggest do a try on a yeah. unit before you buy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, because it, it might actually turn out to be a little bit more expensive because what you're now doing is you're having to pay uh, for a day an, of an extra introduction, day. an extra day. Yeah. Uh, but that could actually end up saving you thousands yeah. of dollars. And know? that's what they did. And that's what I really appreciate that uh, my instructor offered because, uh, you know, like that's not only gave me the chance to eventually try it, mm -hmm. right? And, and see how it, uh, if I like it or not. But then when I decided to do the course, I already know a little bit what to expect. And I have one day, one day of experience yep. already. Yep, so exactly. that really like uh, worked out great. Right. Does so, that answer the question? It does. Yeah, okay. I think uh, we have one more question. And guys, if you have any question out there, please keep them coming until we will stay live. We will be very happy to answer any question about rebreather diving with expert Mark Crane. And here is a question from uh, Thomas Ozen. Question oh, for Mark. Oh, yeah. Okay. Like, actually, Tom, you were supposed to be asking these guys questions. <laughs> Are Luca and Mike allowed to take their cameras with them tomorrow? No. <laughs> no. No. Good. <laughs> Short, I don't, have to, answer, I don't no. have to set up a camera. No, no. Thing. And I'm actually glad too because uh, there is still lots of things. Prep work. That we need to understand before we actually start to put our brain, divided mm, yes. it into monitoring and do another thing. Yeah. So, would be okay, another question from Pfizer, would be okay if I was the only person doing a rebreather dive in the team and the other people are doing normal gas dives? That's a very good question too. Uh, normal gas? Um, open circuit. Uh, open circuit. Okay, so uh, like for example, you're now uh, on a liverboard, you're the only person there yeah. on a rebreather uh, and everybody else is now uh, doing single tank nitrox profiles. Yeah, right. yeah, you can do, absolutely. Um, it was something that, that, that was happening uh, a lot where I uh, was before uh, in Egypt. Um, when rebreathers were only really starting to uh, come into the marketplace, mm. uh, you'd be out on a liverboard, you know, everybody be there using nitrox, and then suddenly you'd have one guy there with a rebreather or one, uh, one girl there with a rebreather, uh, and it's now then uh, trying to keep the group together. What the uh, rebreather diver then needs to do is obviously, obviously adjust their dive time possibilities yeah. to to you be know, with the group and match the rest of the group because you know uh solo diving on a rebreather i wouldn't really uh, recommend yeah. that right tom tom yeah, uh, yeah. No solo diving. <laughs> but anyway tom. Uh, 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 <laughs> moving on moving on yeah. swiftly and that's uh, the general uh, thing uh, but, uh, if you now uh, you're going to actually have to have a little bit of a chat with the people you're diving with. Uh, what nitrox are they actually you know, using? Yeah. Are they going to be using a standard 32? Are they using a, uh, a 28? Because you can then dial and select your partial pressure of oxygen. To match. You are setting the unit up to give you that advantage. But you don't uh, really gain the benefit of the time. You don't gain the benefit of the time. So, I mean, if you now got a... No, a, a, but a, maybe you, if you're moving, let's say, a little bit on the side, still the remaining view like remaining with a group, but a bit on the side, you get the chance maybe because of you are without it, bubbles to yeah, get closer right. to yeah, fish. Yeah, yeah. So, Let, let's try and put yeah. it in a bit of context to the dive site I think we're all familiar with, mm. uh, which is Kalang Makassar in Komodo, you know, uh, where the mantas yeah. are. You, we're all sat uh, there on the rubble in 20 meters of water. Right. Uh, okay, people are on a Nitrox 32, as Luca already calculated earlier on. The rebreather diver now, he would just basically set his partial pressure of oxygen to one right. bar. You'll yeah, be exactly the same. You'll and have the same kind of uh, bottom time capability. Yep. The rebreather diver has, however, the advantages as soon as they start the ascent. As long as that PPO2 is staying the same, uh, they're just going to be off gassing a lot better. Absolutely. Yeah. So definitely it's an advantage for you and it's okay to dive with a with other open circuit people, it, you're it, gonna it, max, you're gonna have much less nitrogen in your body. You're gonna maximize uh, your metabolism. <clears throat> metabolism. Yeah. And the water. How uh, you meta? But also the other thing here is how you can compare that is uh, diving nitrox and leaving your computer switched on air. Yeah. For example, uh, from the from exactly. a safety perspective. From a safety which perspective. Which, if you're now on a liverboard and you're doing maybe three, four, possibly five dives a day. Yeah. Uh, 
uh, having that uh, reduction in nitrogen or inert gas uh, yeah. definitely is going to be meaning you're going to be less fatigued. Right. Uh, yeah, less fatigue, uh, definitely. And there are some liverboards, like uh, we were, when we were talking with Alison Witzke, that uh, like in Cocos Island, you, you, you own Galapagos, uh, when you go a with a liverboard that organize and cater also for rebreather divers, but they mix them. So because you are not doing bubbles now with the rebreather, you get uh, also a favorite point. You can actually go down in the hammerhead dive and be, let's say, a little bit deeper and at the front of everybody else because you do not disturb the group with the bubbles. And she was saying that all the rebreather divers, not only they could stay down, let's say, longer, but they were all getting the action. Also, while the open circuit people were there, the, all the rebreather divers were getting the action of the hammerheads right on top of their heads. Uh, I mean, again, here, in an Indonesian perspective, again, a dive site I'm sure you guys are familiar with, uh, Castle Rock. Castle yep. Rock, uh, Castle Komodo. Rock. You know, you have all the uh, the, the grey reefs, the black tips, and the white tips there on that kind of uh, amphitheater. Uh, well, on that uh, terraced slope, uh, you sit down there in 30, 35 meters of water with your rebreather. Uh, you've got your open circuit colleagues behind you who are then right. going like, "NDL's coming. Yeah, right, we're going to go. go up. <laughs> uh, we'll move up to twenty-five, yeah. and you can just basically." Is it okay if I just watch, stay right. here, yeah, and look? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. That's right. Uh, and you just have that that, yeah. that advantage. Malapasqua, uh, thresher shark. Thresher yeah. shark, another one. Yeah. You're sitting there on the top of the shoal, 35, 40 meters of water. Yeah. Uh, bang, People bugger off very soon on open 10, circuit. 10, 15 minutes on open circuit, they're gone. They got up early in the morning yeah. to go and yeah. experience yeah. that. You can spend the next hour there. But that shows, uh, coming back to Pfizer's question about it, it is okay to dive, let's say, with other people on open circuit. But maybe you should find somebody that is also interested in doing the course and then you guys start to dive together so at least you can buddy up and be together in a group and take advantage of this. You're going to have, let's say, a way better training than any open water, uh, open water, open circuit diver out there because once you come out from this, for sure, your knowledge is going to be like top notch and technique too that you learn during this. So I'm sure that uh, many operations would allow you you and your body to eventually stay a little bit uh, longer than the conventional people. It, it also makes actually a lot of sense here, and that's the thing when uh, coming to selecting a rebreather. Uh, yes, you need to actually have a look at what uh, what what is what is the things you expect from the rebreather, mm. what you want it to do for you. But you then also need to take into consideration here servicing uh, availability, access to spare parts. Uh, if you're now actually diving with uh, another person on a, the same closed circuit rebreather or in a team of people, uh, uh, it's then a lot easier to kind of group on spare right. parts and you share it around. Right. Uh, right. The same units. Yeah, we have one more question. Units, like uh, interchangeable. Exactly. So this is from uh, Mike Rollins, and he's asking. Hi, Mike. How are you doing? How, how, how's it there? And he's in SA. He's in South yeah, Australia. Yeah. South Adelaide, Australia. Adelaide, isn't yep. it? Yeah. So is after correct, a dive. You have to clean out the scrubber of kit litter, white powder, which is inside that. We've uh, lost the yeah. uh, camera. Okay. Oh, the battery's or there. Or do you, yeah, change the battery. <laughs> or do you just... Uh, uh, change the battery. Or do you just it in the bin? Throw also, in the bin. Also, how much does a dive cost per refill of kit litter? Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Uh, the kitty litter, the absorbent material is... We are still, we yeah, are still, yeah, we're, we're uh, still good. Oh, we, we just they can hear us, but they cannot see. Guys, we're coming back. Yeah, Don't okay. worry. Uh, small technical we are a little bit blackout, but uh, uh, it's um, a battery change. With regard to uh, Mike's question there. Uh, we're back. We're back. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Mike's question there. You can use the uh, scrubber, uh, the kitty litter, the white powder, uh, in line with the manufacturer's recommendations. That varies from uh, unit to unit. Uh, and this is something that uh, during training, your uh, your instructor will actually take you through. You don't need to throw it away. At, that's my dog. Uh, that's a dog. No, very uh, nice. Very good dog. Mind, dog. Uh, yeah, you don't need to throw it away at the end of every dive. You don't need to change it out at the end of every dive. That uh, is, is not necessary. Uh, uh, it does have a, a particular life cycle. Um, dumping it uh, depends again here where you are. Uh, I tend actually to compost mine here. Mm. Uh, uh, because what it is, once it's actually been uh, completely bound chemically uh, and it's been depleted, uh, you're dealing with chalk salt right. at the end of the day. So uh, I've always been told it's really good for, for the roses. 
I don't have a rose garden. I'm not a horticulturist. Well, you've been uh, promised a rose garden. I, I've been told some. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've, uh, I've been told by some people uh, that it's not great for the garden, but uh, I compost it. But it can't be that toxic, or else we it's wouldn't not, be able to breathe through it. Exactly. Uh, and then, as far as the price is concerned, uh, depends again on where you are. Um, Speaking here from, from an Indonesian perspective, you're looking at a kilo price here of uh, approximately 12 US. Okay. Uh, uh, depending on where you are. I mean, that's here on Bali. Right. Uh, that's also then because it needs to be imported. It's freighted in from Europe. Uh, it then gets the duty, customs, right. taxation. Uh, then there's transportation from uh, Jakarta uh, over to here. If you're now somewhere in places like, I don't know, Sarong or Raja Ampat, you're it's also going to be paying a little bit more there. Uh, therefore, gaining the efficiency out of your absorbent material is <clears throat> something Needed. to consider there. Yep. Uh, uh, I think in SA, well, so I think in Australia, it is approximately the same price, but uh, Aussie dollars to US dollars. Okay. Again, depending on where you are, but you're probably looking at about 12 Aussie uh, in places like Melbourne, uh, Perth. Um, so maybe it may, maybe a little bit more. Okay. Where in Europe, because it's actually manufactured there, they don't have the same kind of duties and costs on mm. there. Uh, it's going to be a lot less. Gotcha. Uh, now tell me something. I I didn't listen to this last part, so sorry for that. <laughs> but because I'm busy here with the comments and things, so if you already covered it, just tell me. <laughs> but uh, so we're talking about a little bit about money things. Mm -hmm. Okay. What would be the cost for a dive? On rebreather versus a dive on, uh, let's say, open circuit is a little bit difficult. You ask us the math over here. We're going to ask that back to you right now. Economics. Uh, okay, but no, yeah. that's actually a way that you got me into this because if you think at the end of the day, like how much is a feel and so on, like I wouldn't say uh, the, the the price for a dive because let's say that on average around the world the price for a dive is between let's say forty sixty dollars or something like that on average. You know, mm -hmm. something like this. But then there are many people that they just, uh, uh, let's say, rent tanks like this and uh, mm -hmm. they, they go diving like this. Maybe they pay for a refill. Uh, what would you pay in the States? Ten dollars. Uh, like ten, fifteen dollars per refill. Okay. What would be, let's say, a refill of your unit once you've done the first investment? Your oxygen uh, analyzers are all in place like this. Now let's just talk about. Uh, on a daily basis? On a daily basis. Uh, on a daily basis, the running costs. Okay, yeah, so you've made that initial investment, which is the unfair thing about rebreathers. Yeah, expensive. Uh, because, yeah, you know, you want to play uh, the rebreather game, you've got to put your all in. Yep. You've got to make that initial investment. It's not like where you can piece things together. Uh, I'll buy another regulator, I'll buy another wing, I'll get a harness, right. I'll get this. Right. It's like I'm all in. Boom. Okay, so you've made that. You've made that investment. Okay, then you've got running costs. The thing here is, uh, what you've got to ask yourself is, how many dives do I actually do or intend yeah. to do on an annual basis? Yeah. If you're doing 10 dives a year, no. don't go with a rebreather. Right. Probably it not. is something you do not need. No. You really do not need it. Uh, because it's Unless actually you're really that no, photographer. No, no, because it's actually going to cost you more money. <laughs> it's going to cost you more it's, money. It's, it's going to cost you more money. But if you can if afford you, it, you don't want the bubbles. Uh, even if I do 10, I'm going to leave over two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay uh, um, but let's say for me that i you know i'm gonna go what, in the water very often what you, if you're going in the water very often and now you actually suddenly put a rebreather in your uh, tool kit uh, you'll actually end up going diving more often yeah you'll end up going Longer. diving uh, you go diving more often you're actually then uh, within your uh, level of training and certification you will actually be going to the maximum depth of your, right. of your certification more often. Uh, you're going to then be you know, starting to move into mixed gas, spending more time at depth. Then it breaks down. I'd say I'm basing that here on a calculation uh, for, for, for where we are here in Bali. How much, not in terms of money, let's say like how many times more or how many times uh, less is going to, on a fraction, is going to cost me compared to open water circuit, based uh, on what we have around here in Bali. Uh, okay, so I mean, uh, let's just stick with air or nitrox uh, yeah. fill and the oxygen. Uh, so if you're now doing dives in that 30 meter range, uh, 30, 35, or maybe even possibly up to 40 meters, um, 
you are going to be spending per dive again let's say the dive is one hour right uh, because then we're needing yep. to take into yeah, consideration yeah. the absorbent material dive, open, okay yeah. great so uh it's 45 i would actually say two hundred and fifty thousand a dive Two hundred and fifty thousand per dive i've co completely sold the whole industry cheap here i know 25 aussie dollars. <laughs> uh, yeah 25 <laughs> I, uh, to 35 aussie the, dollars that. now this uh, this we're talking about on materials then we are not talking about, let's say, that the people that they cater for you. So just on the road. So that means that if you would gas be able to go gas, and get gas, gas, by gas yourself, and gas and or you are able gas to go to get, get the gas. Uh, but, and but then the also litter. don't forget you've, uh, you, you're you using those oxygen sensors. Those yeah. oxygen sensors, yeah. they right. need They're to be expensive. replaced yeah. uh, at least uh, annually. Uh, uh, other manufacturers six are months. recommending every six months. Yeah. Those are popping in at 65 euro yep. uh, without shipping and without taxation right. and stuff like that. So, you know, th th that's adding cost to that as well. Uh, batteries. But, though, but, but those oxygen sensors, they're deteriorating if you dive or, or if not. you don't. Right. So go diving. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, then it's yes. worth the investment. Then it's worth. At the end of the day, it's worth the investment. I, I mean, when I, you mean do I got. I got I try, try and actually put it into this kind of context here. I got into rebreathers because I didn't want to actually pay huge bills on helium gas that I was just inhaling once and just blowing up to the surface. Right. Yeah. You, you were just actually seeing. The much dollars. more efficient than tech diving. Yeah. Then, se seeing the dollars flow so away. You see then a huge benefit if you start to go deep. Yes, absolutely. Then it's like I, cheaper. I, I, than I, open I wasn't circuit. actually I wasn't actually doing deeper open circuit trimix dives because the gas costs scared me off. So expensive. Right. They were right. so expensive. I then moved into the rebreather. Uh, yeah. And the rebreather, uh, as far as the gas costs were concerned, I found myself actually doing dives to the limit of my training at that particular moment uh, more often because I could afford the gas. Right. Awesome. And it kind of worked out that the rebreather paid for itself within 60 dives. Wow. 60 dives. Okay. Wow. I, I didn't go out. I, you know, I, I, was a, I was working as a diving instructor in Egypt. Uh, I was... Uh, oh my lordy! Uh, you were young. Uh, yeah, you were in I was, I, 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 was, I, was in, I was in my late twenties. Uh, Forty was, years back. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> when we were still using abacuses, um, uh, I was in my late twenties, and I just couldn't really afford not as a diving ten thousand US dollars for a piece of diving equipment. Mm. So I went out and I bought a good second-hand unit. Right. And within 60 dives, I basically recouped the, the investment just from the from dives that I was wanting to do, which was right. I was into deep wrecks. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. We have another testimonial here. This one is from Alexis, Alexis Chapuis. That is also... I He's saw in the him comments. Live. I saw him there. Yeah. He's probably and actually commenting, why is his so unit Al there? Alexis uh, is... He did. Uh, yeah. <laughs> he did ask is this one. his? Yeah, it is his. He did ask. He's yeah. like, where's my electronics? Yeah. I've got that this is it. separated. <laughs> it's so good, Alexis. So, it's good. So Alexis Don't freak is a out. scientist. Enjoy the cheese. Uh, enjoy the cheese. He's a scientist <laughs> and he does uh, deep water research. And so for Alexis, uh, definitely the benefit is longer bottom time, the possibility to access the deeper part of the reef, no bubble, so bad for wildlife observation and photography is also a photographer mm. Alexis so absolutely it's the tool and that's why we're getting into this yeah. like you and I we're getting into this because uh, we want to have the best one one of the great tool to do uh, also filmmaking underwater so definitely this is one and we have also another testimonial here from another Emmy Award uh, oh, oh, Emmy, Emmy, Emmy Award Emmy Award, Emmy Award, <laughs> yeah. 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 Emmy Award <laughs> Roger yeah. Munz yeah. throw that in yeah. there yeah, exactly. that, boom but he was uh, Jason. Didn't, didn't he work on the Blue Planet 2? He worked on you the know, Blue the, Planet uh, 2. The, uh, and, highly acclaimed Blue Planet 2. And he's been also on our live show. So <laughs> there is an episode all with Roger Munz. If you want to get into filmmaking uh, underwater and become a cameraman, that's a great uh, one to actually listen to. Guys, uh, from Roger, okay. Who Roger also does this unit? says, okay, <laughs> basically the Daily Breather is one of the tools that the filmmaker should have. And here is what he says. So as underwater filmmaker, we have a toolbox of diving technique available to us, namely free diving, scuba and rebreather. Every shoot I assess which technique is best suited to get optimal results. 
The rebreather comes into its own for the ability to do extend times underwater with your subject. That is primary benefit for me. Spending 3-4 hours with an animal versus 1 or 2 on normal scuba gives you the bigger window a bigger window into its life and its behavior. It can also get closer to some subject which might be spooked by bubbles from open circuit such as sharks. So you get closer to sharks with a rebreather, okay? It's an incredible tool for an underwater filmmaker. That Perfect. was yeah, I, 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 When I was actually watching your, uh, your, your chat which was uh, featured on your show, mm -hmm. uh, I, you know, a couple of months back, uh, I lose all sense of time with COVID. Um, but uh, you were discussing with Roger there about that uh, clownfish encounter yeah, that you'd filmed exactly. for the Blue Planet, right? Uh, to where it was enabled by this exact piece yep. of equipment. You stay there for so long, yeah, to get the behavior. Yeah, yeah. All right, guys. I think, uh, I think that's about I, it. I don't yeah. see any more questions coming drinking. in. Mark, yeah. Mark, Mark wants Mark wants to eat dinner. <laughs> We've been about an hour here now on. Guys, it was great to have you all here. This was the Rebreather Clinic. Uh, apologies for the connections problem that we had uh, every here and there. We are in Ahmed. We are not in our studio. We are remoted somewhere. Actually, in a cave. The <laughs> yeah. In the man cave. In a nice cave <laughs> full of toys. <laughs> you know? Different and, toys. Uh, different toys. Weird toys. So, if you enjoyed this show, guys, Please make sure to like and share with your friends. Uh, if you want to listen to it again and you will not have that choppy experience you might have had on the first part of this uh, show, you can actually uh, wait a moment. It will be available on our Facebook page soon. It will be processed. And I think when Facebook processes that, it doesn't yeah. leave it choppy. It's actually now Does smooth it? and clear. That's good. Yeah. And uh, we will post this also like uh, in the future. Once we go back to our headquarters, we're going to upload it on YouTube because I think that it was a great conversation. Yeah, thanks, Mark, good. for yeah, this. Thank you very much, guys. We really thank you. about that. We're, and thanks a lot for all the questions. We, we, we now need to go and tidy up rebreathers yes. yeah, and debrief and, and think about wash. gas for tomorrow. That's right. <laughs> so we really appreciate it, all of you coming in with, uh, with questions. And uh, we look for the being back. We're going to be back in the studio next week. Next week. Uh, on you Friday. Hope. And Maybe. we're going to do a live from there. And... Uh, who That's we're it. Gonna have uh, I don't even know who we're going to have next. I know. We're, 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 we're going to have we'll, a Fred we'll Boyle. Yes. Amazing, amazing free diver legend, Fred Boyle. So make sure that you're going to tune in also on next uh, Friday with us. Guys, if you enjoyed the show and you would like to give a contribution to us, uh, we have a few links in the description. You can use those uh, to do so. If you would like to get a beautiful Underwater Tribe t-shirt, we Ooh. also place a link in the description with all our merchandise. You can find it in the description of this live show here. You also or, have nice trucker hats. Yes. A nice trucker hat, hat. <laughs> yes. We We're not wearing them, them. we got them. <laughs> Till the next time, guys. Uh, it's been great to have you here. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye.